In the last episode of our Unplugged and Moab trip, we enjoyed our campsite on Lockhart Road, then hiked two kid-friendly hikes in the Needles District of Canyonlands National Park before returning to our awesome campsite. If you haven't yet seen that video, click on the card above. This morning while making my sunrise time lapse, I tried pointing the camera away from the sun to see what it would look like as the sun rises and washes across the campsite. I like the resulting effect, but found I need a view of a much larger area to see the effect better. Regardless, having cliffs in the vicinity made for lots of locations where I could place my camera, and I really couldn't go wrong because every direction looks awesome. It is now 7.30 in the morning. The sun has not yet risen. Here inside the trailer, it's 72, and outside it's 50 degrees Fahrenheit. And then checking out the electrical system, we ended up the morning here at 54%, and we're just barely getting five watts of solar and we're consuming 88. The mini split is on right now with the heat pump on and it's been on since about 3.30 in the morning. Set to 70 degrees Fahrenheit. The girls are all doing their schooling first thing in the morning. It's a cool view to your schoolroom, girls. I've said it before, but I'll say it again. This was the quietest campsite we've ever stayed at. Hey baby. Are you having fun? Staying clean? <laughs> do you wish you could run around with your sisters? I bet you do. They're little rock monkeys right now, huh? Hi, Clara. And they're gone. <laughs> I made this swimming pool for my baby mouse. Oh yeah? Cool. Dude, they're making little balls for the party. Uh, I'm trying, I've been trying to get James to slobber in this bucket so I can get it wet. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And these are because what I'm trying to make. Castle, mm -hmm. But he just won't slobber in it. Mm. He tries to eat it. it. He slobbers everywhere else. Yeah. You playing with the... <laughs> the trailer chains. <laughs> Just loving being in the dirt. We're all packed up and we're leaving this area now and we're going to be heading back up into the Moab area. Checking the electrical system before we leave, we're at 51% and we're getting 1400 watts of solar. Because we have so much power, I'm just going to go ahead and leave the water heater on while we drive. Let's see how charged up we get before we get to our next site. We continued to enjoy the spectacular views of Canyonlands as we departed our awesome campsite and drove north to the Moab area. I had an ideal boondocking spot in mind for our next campsite, but I wasn't sure if it was going to be too difficult to get to with our trailer size, because some of the reviews from others who have been there mentioned the road is pretty rough. I decided to go check it out anyway, just so we'll know for ourselves and what it's like there. The drive was 88 miles, or around 2 hours of driving, but that doesn't include stopping along the way to see Wilson Arch. Along the way, Jessica read a book to the kids and I listened to YouTube videos with headphones as is pretty typical for us. Although sometimes we find the book we want as an audiobook so Jessica doesn't have to read for hours. This river valley was spectacularly beautiful with the fall colors and if you haven't watched the second video of this trip when we arrived here, I recommend going back and watching that too because it was so beautiful. We stopped at this roadside pullout on the side of the highway, and we're gonna go check out this arch, which is called Wilson Arch. As is typical with cameras, it really doesn't do justice to how steep this terrain was. Go Lydia, go Lucy. It's pretty cool. What do you think, Clara? <laughs> hey James! <laughs> Are you having fun on this hike? This is less steep right here, it looks like. Right here or over there? It's probably the easiest thing over there. Whew. Look at this arch! Let me see. What do you think of this arch, girls? You like it? What do you, what do you think of this arch, Clara? I love it. You love it? This is also a really short hike. 
Very short hike. What do you think of the Arch Lucy? I like it. <gasps> Look at this view. Really striking. How about you, James? I love to hike! <laughs> this shows a better example of how steep this spot is. Because <laughs> the girls are standing straight up. Good job. What a beautiful arch. All right. This arch is stunningly beautiful, and the fact that it's such an easy hike is just a bonus. It's really steep. And there's the uh, truck and trailer down there. Let's go back down to the trailer and see how much solar we're getting. <laughs> Clara leaves hearts wherever she goes. <laughs> We're uh, getting lunch ready. You can see maybe by how Jessica's standing, it's definitely tilted here in the trailer. And uh, we're up to 71% now on the battery and we're getting 1,680 watts at the moment. Gotta love having a kitchen on the side of the road. Right now it is 63 outside and 74 inside. We are now back at the Maverick in Moab and I'm taking advantage of the dump station here to clear out our black and gray water tanks. They do have a uh, flush hydrant here, so that's really nice. And then over there on the other side is that uh, building right there where we got our fresh water last time. We're gonna loop around over there and refill our fresh water tank while we're here. We are now getting our fresh water and we have our 100 foot hose that's going around over here. I guess I could have pulled in on the other side, but I didn't. And this is our hose going over this way. And they've got a splitter here so that two people can be filling up simultaneously, which is nice. While the fresh water tank is filling up, I'm checking this and we're at 84% on the battery and we're getting 1600 watts. And right now it is 1.16 p.m. And we're filling up our tank too. The gas is now 4.53 a gallon. Ended up being $90.14 and 19.8 gallons. After the pit stop, we headed to our intended camping destination where I thought it might be possible to camp, but needed to check it out for sure because people's opinions about road conditions vary dramatically depending on their experience, so I just wanted to see it for myself. I considered dropping off the trailer here at this first parking area to scout with the truck alone, and in hindsight I most certainly should have done just that, but I was hopeful that we'd be able to make our way successfully all the way into the campsite with the trailer in tow. It takes time to drop the trailer, but not as much time as those who have weight distribution hitches, and we could have driven faster without the trailer, and that likely would have made up for the last two to three minutes needed to unhitch the trailer. This was a lesson learned for me to drop the trailer more readily if the feasibility of the intended drive was in question at all. The misleading thing though was that the majority of this road was just a regular gravel road that didn't give me much cause for concern. We did go through a wash that was slightly concerning because bogging down in sand is no good, but it wasn't deep sand and was no problem. Then we got to the fork in the road to go to the actual campsite, and up ahead I could clearly see the rise in the road that looked like it might be the deal breaker for us. We went ahead and dropped the trailer there to scout with the truck alone. Once we got into the campsite, I really liked it, and there were certainly several spots we could have parked our trailer, and the backdrop against the red cliffs would have been really cool to set up camp against. However, sadly, right at the end of the road is a large hump that looks to me like it probably would have bottomed out the front of our trailer, and was just a little beyond my comfort zone of rough roading with our trailer in tow. So this road is more extreme than uh, it was led to believe on Campendium. So, uh, we had dropped the trailer over there, you can see it, and we just scouted it out, and this road is way too gnarly for us to want to bring our trailer in here. So we are going to go back and hook up to our trailer and go find another camping spot. <laughs> Look at that extreme yeah, angle tilted. on the trailer. It's very tilted at the moment. We hitched up the trailer and towed it back to the highway. This campsite, though, is on my shortlist now to come back to without our trailer someday, if that ever makes sense. All right, we have finally arrived at our next campsite. 
there was a lot of filming I didn't do because we were busy. I was busy driving and we were trying to figure out where to camp. The place that I had intended to camp, we uh, got there and the road was way too gnarly for our size of rig. Uh, I would venture to say uh, the trailers, there were two trailers there and they were maybe 15 feet long at max, maybe even just 10 pretty small. We backtracked from there and then it took us a while because we went to some places that are, they used to be BLM land and free camping, but um, they've been turned into the Utah Raptor State Park and now there's fees and we don't want uh, to deal with that if we don't have to. So we came up the road just a few miles and we found a spot here. I'll put here on the screen what this place is called. The view here is definitely not as cool as the Canyonlands place that we just came from. This is very much just open desert really rather boring but you know for what it's worth the kids always have a ton of fun with their sand toys and a bunch of dirt right so <laughs> they're already busy and i've already set up starlink and so it's rocking and rolling we've uh, leveled the trailer and so we're good to go um this is the view in the other direction you can see that we do have some neighbors there's two rigs there and then two rigs over that way. We have a little bit of separation. We drove down this road for quite a while trying to find more open, free, um, you know, an unoccupied location and just decided to not keep exploring uh, because we would have had to continue going up that road and there are a couple of more rigs farther along. So we weren't sure how much farther we'd have to drive before we'd find a uh, available spot that was all to ourselves and other people might join us anyway because it's just kind of open desert. And so ultimately we just decided to stay here because this road is really, really bumpy. Like it's a lot of rocks embedded in the, the bedrock of the road. And so just, we drove very slowly and it was very slow getting here and everything was still being very jostled. So in the trailer, let's check out the, oh, hey James, how's it going baby? <laughs> here in the trailer, we are at uh, 87 degrees and it's 84 degrees outside, almost 85 degrees. So it's much hotter here than where we just came from. So we just turned on the mini split. So it's just starting to ramp up the air conditioning. And looking over here, you can see it's 339 now and we're at 100%. And so the solar is ramped down because it can't produce more when the battery's full. But as soon as the air conditioning starts to really kick into high gear, then this consumption will increase dramatically. The mini split is now, I think, at full blast. I put it down to 64 degrees and I pushed the button that is called powerful right here on the remote, which according to the manual, I think just tells it to go straight into the maximum mode and affect the temperature change more quickly. So if we come over here and look at the electrical system, we're at 911 watts. Uh, and I think it can go higher than that though. So I'm gonna wait and see and then we're now producing a thousand watts where just moments ago It was down in the couple hundred watts and that's because now we have a place for it to go The battery is still full and it's actually being discharged just a tiny little you know five watts So it's basically solar is taking up all of the slack and right now we could be producing more solar than this It's just that we don't have enough uh, demand for it coming around to the front to see how loud The mini split sounds outside. This is the sound of it. So it's very quiet. Here's a quick update on the temperature. On the inside now, it is 75 degrees and outside it is 89.4 degrees. We are bringing in 745 watts of solar and the mini split is consuming 615 watts and it's about keeping that 75 degree temperature. I've been watching it for a little while and it's been holding steady. And our battery is actually still being charged just, oh, it's actually more <laughs> on equilibrium, just up and down just a little bit. So it's kind of cool with the sun that we still have here at 4:10 uh, p.m. and we're able to maintain that much air conditioning. Hey girls, Where's kids. Oh, what is that? Is they're that pebble stew? Cakes. They're little cakes to the mouse. Oh, they're little to cakes. The so they're like rolled up dirt. Uh huh. Oh, oh, this is the manufacturing right here. Oh. Oh, and then you spit. Oh, I see, and then you make a little ball. <laughs> oh, perfect. They're really easy to make. And yeah. then you have to put them in the oven. Yeah, but oh, then and that's the oven. set the timer. Oh. Like, it's like great. <laughs> yeah. They're super You know what you can do, too? Huh. Is you can dry them in the sun. Yeah. And the sun is right here. Oh, he's going in head first. 
<laughs> we are now at 71.4 degrees and outside it's uh, almost 87 degrees. And then looking at the electrical system, we are producing 150 watts is all and the mini split's pulling 490 and it's showing that it's discharging 447 watts from the battery which doesn't make a whole heck of a lot of sense because we are still getting a lot of solar. Oh, I see what was going on. The larger MPPT went into float mode for some reason. Uh, well, probably because the battery's full, but uh, it's not meeting all of the demands of the system because we've got the mini split going. It's pulling 800 watts from the battery right now, and the solar is still really low. You can see the big MPPT now is just jumping out of float, so <laughs> uh, it's ramping up its production now. So it, it kind of goes in and out of float mode, I guess, as the battery is full and then it detects demand and then it rises the production to meet the demand. Doing a status update on the mini split. We're at 65 degrees inside and 86 outside. Looking at this Ericsson thermostat for the furnace, it is showing uh, 67. We are at 671 watts of solar being produced, 868 being consumed by the mini split, and the battery is at 99%. I've been pushing the mini split hard and it's starting to exceed the solar output, and so it's pulling off of the battery slightly. It's cool to see what the capabilities are of this system because we haven't actually camped in hot weather yet and this is about the hottest weather that we have camped in in the trailer so far. I have done a hot weather test that was just you know parked by our house when it was around 95 degrees that day. Hey girls! Look at that hole! It's gonna be an amazing hot tub this for him. Hey James! <laughs> Now let's see. <laughs> Are you having so much fun? Yes. He's making the making and he's not my new hot tub. You look like you're having a lot of fun by based on how muddy you are. Hey girls, what are you eating for dinner? Tacos. Mmm, burritos. What do you think of your view out the window? I don't like it. Yeah, it's all right. Too many people. Too many people, and it's not as cool as our last place, huh? Mm -hmm. Are you getting spoiled for camping places? <laughs> Are you getting too used to really nice camping places? Mm -mm. We've done some really cool ones, huh? We just finished with dinner and now the kids are having a movie night. What do you think, girls? It is now 10.10 10 p.m. and the battery is at 80%. This is the trailer's electrical system for that day of the trip. Beginning the day, we were at 74% in the morning at midnight and then the battery state of charge continued to march down from there. And you can see down here there was a spike probably from the water heater, etc. And right here at 40% is where the battery bottomed out that day. And you can see the energy consumption ramped up this morning and then went back down, but we were just kind of living in the trailer for a while this morning. And then around here is when we departed and started the drive for the day, and that was during the peak of the solar production. So that's what's great about rooftop solar panels on a trailer rather than ground deploy is that you produce electricity while you're on the road. And so our trailer got up to 100% here about 1 p.m. And so the production dropped off because of that, and it was at 100% for a couple of hours. And then finally, we got to our campsite, turned on the mini split, and this uh, power consumption here is probably largely due to that mini split pulling heavily on the battery. And so we uh, continued on through the evening, a couple of spikes here from the water heater probably, and we ended the day at 74% on the battery. And so our consumption for the whole day was 6.9 kilowatt hours and the solar production was 9.7 kilowatt hours. So it definitely would have been more solar production than this, except that the battery filled up so the solar uh, panels had nowhere to send the electricity. So it uh, just, uh, the solar charge controllers ramp down the production when the battery fills up. I'm learning that any day where we relocate the trailer, depending on how many hours we drive and how late in the morning we leave, it's less likely that we'll do any additional adventures away from the trailer that day. Not impossible, but it takes a fair amount of time to relocate the trailer, especially on a day like today where we spent an extra two hours getting to this campsite due to the wasted time trying to get to that other site. I'm not begrudging that effort because it would have been an awesome place to camp if it had worked. Compared to tent camping though, it's super nice to be able to roll up into a patch of hot desert like this and within a couple of minutes have a small level apartment set up complete with climate control. We are loving our trailer and the ample solar electricity. 
Despite the less scenic location, this sunset time lapse still turned out awesome, especially with the amazing transition into seeing the night stars and the Milky Way. And there's a lot more airplane traffic in this area than I would have guessed without seeing it in our time lapse. One advantage of this location was no cliffs blocking the open view of the sky. In our next video, we explore Arches National Park all day, including the visitor center as well as several kid-friendly hikes. Subscribe to get automatically notified when our next video publishes. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video.